Hello, my name is Camila Moreno. I'm an UIS student and this is my video for comparative linguistics. I choose the topic of nouns because I think it's a very basic topic and it's really important to get to know them better so we can know how to use them better, how to improve their use. I decided to do a PowerPoint presentation because I consider that it is the simplest um, way to introduce this topic, to be able to explain it very well, to provide a lot of examples, and I think it's the uh, um, most uh, accurate form to get people to understand it uh, better. So here we go. Here it is, topic uh, nouns. So uh, the definition of noun is that it is a word used to name a person, animal, place, thing, or abstract ideas. Abstract ideas are the things that we cannot see that are on our mind, but we will see them later. Uh, so, nouns can be a person, an animal, an idea, a place, and a city. A person could be a baby, or a student, or Maria, Marta, your mother, etc. An idea shows like freedom, kindness, a place shows like a city or a house or a pool, a farm, an animal can be a puppy, cat, a thing that can, um, can be a flower, a chair, a book, a shelf, a bag, well, etc. So we have to start with concrete and abstract nouns. There are, this, uh, this is like the first division, the first uh, that we can find. So concrete nouns are something you can perceive with your five senses. Shows like we can taste chicken, we can feel the water, we can hear music, we can smell, um, I don't know, the air, and see a book, a shelf, a chair, etc. And abstract nouns are something you cannot perceive with any of your five senses. As I already said before, these are the things that are in your mind. This can be thoughts or ideas. So in abstract nouns, uh, we can find kindness, hope, sadness, freedom, equality, love, etc. Uh, we have collective nouns. This is a word to name a group of people or things. A, a collective noun, so uh, it denotes a group of people. It's just a word, just like family, herd, class, club, or army and troops. Then we have common nouns and proper nouns. So a common noun names everything of the nouns. So it can be a person, animal, uh, with the collective uh, nouns, we had we had troops, so the common nouns could be a soldier or a police, um, and if we have in the collective noun a uh, herd, then our common noun would be a cow, for example. And a proper noun names a specific person, animal, or place. So um, maybe with the collective noun that it was troop, the common noun is a soldat, but the proper noun of that soldat is, I don't know, Marcos, for example. So this is a proper noun. If I have the common noun student, my proper noun would be Camila. My name is Camila and I'm a student. Um, with animals, for example, my cat, uh, my cat names is Vivaldi. So, yes, my cat, but his proper noun is Vivaldi. And for example, with places, uh, Colombia is a country, so our common noun would be country, but the proper noun is Colombia. The same happens with Venezuela, Costa Rica, etc. All of those are proper nouns. So we have compound nouns. These are two or more words acting as a single unit. So if we have the collective, that it, it was one word, but to name uh, two or more types of things. 
The compound nouns are two or more words acting as a single unit. Its naming shows one thing. In the compound nouns, we can find separate words such as coffee table. We can also find social security, dining room, etc. We have hyphenate words just like editor-in-chief and also sister-in-law, mother-in-law, brother-in-law. All of those types of family with in-law are hyphenated words. And we have combined words such as battlefield, a school teacher, high school, bookshelf. There are two words that come uh, together. They come just such as one word. We have count nouns and non-count nouns. These, of course, are all concrete nouns because abstract nouns cannot be counted. We cannot count one freedom, two freedoms, or one love, two loves, etc. So we have count noun. These are uh, the nouns that we can count. We can say one pencil, two pencils, three pencils. Uh, and our example he, in here is they can be singular or plural, of course, count nouns. So a book or two books, as I already said, uh, love is not here because we cannot say one love, two loves. So count nouns are concrete nouns. So one chicken, two chickens, one pencil, two pencils, one shirt, two shirts, all of those are count nouns. Now we have non-count nouns that are the counts that we cannot count and they have no plural form as they cannot be count. So yeah, they don't get to have an S. So we have here the example of bread, cheese, ice cream. We can also have water, uh, music. We cannot count music. We cannot say one music, two musics or money, one money, two monies, or rice, one rice, two rices, it's impossible. So all of these are not count nouns. Next, we have singular or, or plural nouns. As, a, as we already saw before, the not count nouns cannot be plural. They don't have a plural form. So when we have singular and plural nouns, they all are count, countable. So we have singular nouns referring to just one thing. So we have a baby, a student, a puppy, a share, a flower, a, a book, uh, an egg, for example. And we have plural nouns that they always refer to two or more things. So in the case of baby, we have babies. In the case of puppy, we have puppies and flower, we, we have flowers. I decided to put the plural rules in here so you can remember them or learn them to be able to improve the use of your English. So in the plural form, normally S is added. In the, for example, book, books, share, shares, girl, girls, computer, computer, we can also have bag, bags, egg, eggs, uh, etc. Then we have to add ES if the words end in O, S, C, H, X, C, R, and S, H. So the example is tomato, tomatoes. It also works with hero, heroes. For example, we have bus, buses, church, churches, box, boxes. We can also have fox, foxes and brush brushes. Uh, according to what we saw in the last picture, we can see that baby ends in Y and the plural is babies with I E S, not with S only. And puppies uh, uh, happens the same. A puppy and two or more puppies with I E S. And here we have the rule that says add IES if the words ends in consonant plus Y. Here we can see party parties, lady ladies. We remove the Y and add IES. But this doesn't happen 
if the word ends in vowel plus y. We have here the example day, days, toy, toys. We can see in here that the y was not removed. We can we did only add the s. There are other words, other rules, sorry, such as adding this as v e s if the word ends in f or f e. We have life, the plural is lives, teeth, thieves, and we can also have knife, knives, for example. We can see here that the f is removed and we add the v e s, but we have some exceptions uh, such as the case of chef, chefs or roof, roofs. And we have irregular nouns that uh, do not add s or es or anything in their plural form. So we have child, children, woman, women, mouse, mice, tooth, teeth, and we can also find another one just like food, feet, for example. And we have the other side of the irregular nouns that are the ones that stay the same. They don't change. We can say one fish, two fish. We don't have to say two fishes, for example. And we have one deer, two deer, not two deer, so two deeries or something like that. Then we have the possessive noun. The possessive noun uh, has some rules that we're going to see in here. So the possessive noun is a noun that shows ownership or possession. The first and the most usual rule is to add an, an apostrophe plus s. So we have kitten, kittens, yo, joys, uh, children, children's, sheep, ships, etc. It's just having our noun and adding apostrophe plus s. The second rule is adding an apostrophe only, and this happens when we have the noun and the noun it's already having an S. So for example, we have companies, workers, we don't have companies or something like that, horses, countries, armies, etc. And it also works with the names, for example, with Carlos, I love Carlos car, it's Carlos plus apostrophe, no S, no anything, we don't say Carlos's car or anything like that. So it's just when we have the S at the end, it's just apostrophe. The third rule is, hyphen, is with the hyphenated nouns and compound nouns. And this rule, this rule says that we add apostrophe plus S to the end of the compound words or the last in the hyphenated nouns. So we have here the example, my mother-in-law's recipe for meatloaf is my husband's favorite. So we say my mother-in-law's, not my mother's in-law, for example, not my brother's in-law, etc. Uh, and it's my husband's favorite. Well, that's clear. Uh, and the two, it's we have to indicate possession when two nouns are joined together. So if we have two nouns like Camila and Carlos, for example, uh, for example, or he and his girlfriend, or I don't know, Marta and Orlando. We have to add the apostrophe plus s to the noun, to the second noun only. So we have in here Jack and Jill's fail, Abbott and Costello's comedy. So in Marta and Orlando, I can say Marta and Orlando's uh, life, it's very funny, for example. Oh, Camila and Carlos, a uh, car is cute. Or in the opposite way, Carlos and Camila's house is really nice. So the last part of my video is I wanted uh, you to remember the different uh, positions that a noun can be uh, given in a sentence. So we have the first one, nouns in the sentence. It says that in a sentence, the nouns are used as the object of the sentence. So are the main part, the boy, the boy plays in the garden, the baby is crying, my son likes to go out. 
they are the subject. We have, we know that in a sentence we have a subject verb a complement, then we have the boy as a subject, place verb in the garden complement, the baby subject is verb crying complement, and so with the my son likes to go out. So this is the subject. But it also can be a direct object. Let's remember that a, a direct object answers the question what. So we have in here team won a medal. Team won what? Well, a medal. She ate tacos. She ate what? Or what did she eat? What did she eat? I'm sorry. So she ate tacos. And Maria lost her keys. What did Maria lose? Well, her keys. And finally, we have the indirect object. And let's remember that it answers the question to whom. So, Tim gave a rose to Chloe. To whom? Well, to Chloe. She told her mother the truth. She told what? The truth, yes. But to whom? Well, to her mother. So, that, as that is an indirect object. And Maria fired Hamis. Maria fired whom? Or to whom did Maria fire? Well, to James. This is a chart that I found in the web. Uh, it, I consider it very clear, very simple, very concrete about the 10 types of nouns that we can find in English. Just for you to remember in case that you missed something or if you have to check uh, another time, then instead of watching a long video you can see this chart and i think you will find it very useful and these are my references for today's video i really hope you enjoyed it uh, i know i didn't appear much but i really thought it was this was the easiest way for you to understand this topic that is really long and a little bit complicated so here i am Thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoy it. Bye.